The pathograph is an important tool when handing of information between a shift. It can make you a picture to tell the clinician this patient is not progress where he needs cesarean sexual. It helps me in monitoring the progress of labor, more especially in terms of cervical dilatation of the woman in labor, to find out uh, if the labor is progressing well or not. This is a partograph. It is a simple chart which plots observations made during labor. The partograph was developed in Africa and is recommended by the World Health Organization. It is used in both basic and comprehensive maternity units across the world. The partograph enables health workers to plot the women's progress and make decisions on whether interventions need to be made. Correct use can also prevent prolonged labour and may also save the life of the woman and her unborn child. As these observations are identical to the observations always made during labour, this should not lead to any extra work. It just requires that these routine observations are entered on the partograph. In this film, we'll be explaining when and how to use a partograph and how to respond to the information it gives. Firstly, it is very important to always have supplies of partographs in your maternity unit or centre. If stocks are running low, then you can make some photocopies, and if these run out, then use water-soluble ink to make observations on a clean x-ray sheet over a partograph, or you could always keep one emergency laminated sheet. It is very important to observe a woman closely throughout her labour. This will include vaginal examinations to assess cervical dilatation and descent of the baby's head. Labour is the highest risk time of a baby's life, and it is crucial to be diligent at this time. You should start using the partograph when the woman is having regular contractions and her cervix is 4 cm or more dilated. This is known as the active phase of labour. You make this assessment by observing the woman and carrying out a vaginal examination. If the woman is less than 4 cm dilated, then you are not ready to start using the partograph. The partograph should be completed by the health worker caring for the woman in labour. When care is handed over at a change of shift, the partograph is continued by the new caregiver. It is a continuous record of the woman's progress in active labour. Usually only one health worker will be completing the document at one time. A partograph is straightforward when you understand how to use it. It is crucial that you plot the first point in the correct place. After that, you simply need to make the correct observations and understand how they're plotted. Observations should be systematic and made at the correct frequency. For example, vaginal examinations should be made at least every four hours. The user should then understand how to plot on the graph, how to read the graph and how to make decisions about the woman's care. Making observations, plotting and then reading the results makes it much easier to carry out appropriate and timely interventions that could possibly save the life of the woman and her child. The partograph should contain all the information needed to care for the woman and safely deliver the baby. The key partograph readings are those of cervical dilatation, descent of the head and hours in labour. These should be assessed at every vaginal examination. Dilatation of the cervix is marked with an X and descent of the head with a small O. This information is plotted against the alert and action lines on the partograph. The alert line begins at 4 cm of cervical dilatation to the point of expected full dilatation at the rate of 1 cm per hour. Your first plot always needs to be placed on the alert line. So for example, if a woman is admitted at 6 cm dilatation, then this is where the first plot is made. The action line is parallel and 4 hours to the right of the alert line. If the woman's labour is not following the expected course after 4 hours, the plot of her labour will begin to approach the action line, signalling 
the need to take action. This may involve making arrangements to transfer the woman to a better equipped facility before she crosses the action line, if it is going to take several hours to get her there. You must also include other information and observations on the partograph. Fill out the name, record the number of times the woman has been pregnant, even if these pregnancies were not carried to term. The current pregnancy should be included. Then add parity, which indicates the number of above 24 weeks births, including viable and non-viable pregnancies, for example, stillbirths. The woman's hospital number, date and time of admission, and time of ruptured membranes or time elapsed since rupture of membranes if the rupture occurred before charting on the partograph began. You should then record the fetal heart rate every 30 minutes. Record the colour of amniotic fluid at every vaginal examination and note the colour using this key. Capital I, membranes intact. Capital R, membranes ruptured. If the membranes have ruptured, note whether they're clear fluid and you can use capital C. And if it's meconium stained, you can use capital M. If it's blood stained, you use capital B. You should include the date and time of rupture of membranes if known, as this has implications for sepsis. It is crucial to check moulding. This is the extent to which the bones of the foetal skull are overlapping. This indicates the degree of compression that the head is being subjected to during the passage through the birth canal. Increasing moulding can be a sign of disproportion, which suggests the possibility of obstructed labour. When documenting the degree of moulding, use a scale from zero, which means no moulding, to plus three, and write them in the row of boxes provided. Zero denotes that the bones are separated and the sutures can be felt easily. Plus one, denotes that the bones are just touching each other. Plus two denotes that the bones are overlapping but can be separated easily with pressure by your finger. Plus three denotes that the bones are overlapping but cannot be separated easily with pressure by your finger. You assess the descent of the head by abdominal palpation. This refers to how much of the head divided into five parts is palpable in the abdomen above the symphysis pubis. It is recorded as a small O at the same time as every vaginal examination. Fully engaged is when the fetal head is zero fifths palpable and has fully descended into the pelvis. When the fetal head is five fifths palpable, it is not engaged and is completely above the pelvic brim. The partograph section marked hours refers to the time elapsed since onset of the active phase of labour. The graph allows for quarterly hourly recordings of fetal heart and other vital signs which may be recorded within the boxes. The hours should line up with other required information. You should record actual time sideways along the left-hand line of the time boxes. Record the contractions every half an hour. You do this by counting the number of contractions in a 10 minute time period and recording their duration in seconds. When contractions last less than 20 seconds, you may use dots to indicate this and between 20 and 40 seconds, you may use dashes. If contractions last more than 40 seconds, you can use a blacked out box. If oxytocin is being used, record the amount of oxytocin and the volume of IV fluids it has been added to. The drops per minute should be recorded at the start and after every 30 minutes. Record any additional drugs given. Record the pulse every 30 minutes and mark with a dot. Record blood pressure every four hours and mark with arrows. 
Record the temperature every two hours. Take a urine sample and measure the volume passed. Then test for the protein content and acetone. Also record when the urine is actually passed. Now you should understand what observations have to be plotted on a partograph. These are the exact same observations that are made during each and every labour and so the partograph does not lead to additional work. The partograph alert line also highlights when there is a need to transfer the mother to a comprehensive facility and will give you the time to transfer her. Now, for this section of the film, we have asked a health worker to give us observations from three different labours. It is then up to you to decide which intervention, if any, needs to be taken. You'll have 10 seconds to make your decision and then the health worker will give you the correct answer. Fatima is admitted to the hospital at 22 hours. On admission, the cervix is 5 cm dilated and the fetal head is 3 5 powerful. All other observations are normal. After 3 hours in labour, the fetal heart rate, maternal pulse and the blood pressure remains normal. The cervix is 8 cm dilated and the fetal head now is 1 5th powerful. What action should be taken? None. Labour is progressing normally. The observation indicates that no intervention is required. Mariam is admitted at 22 hours and on examination the cell was found to be four symptoms dilated. The baby's head has descended fully into the pelvis and is not palpable abdominally. After four hours in labour, the cervix has only dilated further one centimetre. The amniotic membranes have been artificially ruptured and the fluid is clear. The head remains zero fifth powerful. What action should be taken? The observation suggested that Mariam's experience for long labour. Oxytocin should be administered and recorded on the bathograph, noting the concentration of the drops per litre and the drops per minute. Continue to record dose of oxytocin as well as the other observations on the bathograph. The health worker should also prepare to take the other action if it's needed. On admission at 19.30 and following vaginal examination, Yasmin is found to be four symptoms dilated. The fetal head is not engaged and is at five feet powerful above the pelvic brain. The amniotic membranes are still intact. After four hours of labor, Yasmin is eight symptoms dilated and the fetal head is still five feet powerful. Both observations cross the alert line. The membranes have ruptured and the fluid is clear. By eight hours of active labour, Yasmin is still eight centimetres dilated and the baby's head has still not engaged. The amniotic fluid is meconium stained and the frontal bones of the fetal scar are severely overlapping and Yasmin's blood pressure is increasing. What action should be taken? The observation suggests that the baby is not descending and that labour might be obstructed. When recording that Yasmin's cervical dilatation and the fetal descent has crossed the alert line, the health worker should inform the necessary people that labour is progressing slowly. The health worker should organise transport, if necessary, to a facility where comprehensive obstetric care is available as she probably needs a delivery by cesarean section. As you can see, using a partograph can help identify and plan for intervention that may be needed to support a successful delivery for mother and baby. We do hope 
watching this film has encouraged you to start using partographs.